Well, welcome back to part five. I've been shooting a lot of videos, got a lot of work done in the last week and a half, two weeks. Uh, good news is uh, the body kit from Mantel Motorsports should be here in the next day or so. And also the uh, electric motor kit uh, from EV West along with the batteries, uh, they're on their way also. So uh, we're getting kind of excited over that. Uh, Anyway, I shot a lot of videos here in the last, last week or two, so I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. I wanted to show you this repair. Um, this, this piece was, was dented way in here. Uh, not quite sure how that happened, because uh, the fender showed no sign of damage anywhere on it. Uh, and I believe it's original fender, so I don't know how it happened, but this got pushed in. It was all deformed uh, Easiest way to do it. You know, you you can buy this whole piece new I don't know 50 bucks, whatever But you have to do all of these spot welds all the way around and then it's inside here I mean you have to take all of this off. It's an immense amount of work and there was really no rust issue on this piece it was just badly dented. So anyway, I straightened it out. Um, I put some, welded on some flanges, drilled some holes, put Clecos in here to hold them, and tack welded these on, spot welded them on. And I straightened this piece out. Let's see if I can get it, get it on here for you. There, I got the piece on. Uh, it fits pretty good. Uh, I just made a little, uh, went around with the saw and cut these out. Uh, I went up on the flat part because it's just easier to weld out here on these flat spots rather than cutting this section out in here and trying to straighten it. It was just a lot easier. Uh, so I can go ahead and finish welding this back on and uh, again when it's done it'll, it'll look real nice. Uh, there's something I wanted to mention and I, I should have mentioned earlier when I was showing the, the body to you after it came back. Um, if this car was going back to you know, it's original fenders. Uh, I would not have left this quarter panel the way it is at all. Uh, you can buy a lower quarter panel. It comes up about into this area here. Um, and it, it will replace all of this damaged area because this is dinged up pretty bad. Uh, in fact, the, in the time they spent doing this on this lower dog leg, it probably would have been quicker to replace this whole lower section because the the new section comes with this dog leg and and again up to about here so you can you can trim this off across here um, and it, the weld will actually you know if you, if you don't do a perfect job it's kind of covered up because you see these tiny little holes here and here there's a chrome strip that goes on there, so it, it kind of helps conceal uh, your weld if you don't do a great job with the bodywork. But that's what I did on a prior MG. Um, they were so rusted out back here, they weren't bent, dented up like this one was, but uh, the new one comes all the way back to the center of the tail light and the seam here to the rear valance. So all of this down here would be replaced. And that, that also gives you access to the inner wheel well. If there's any rust issues there, you can repair that metal and then put the new quarter panel back on, or the lower quarter panel, I should say. Um, that's just something I wanted to mention before it got too far. Um, also, I'm not using the engine hoist anymore to raise this. I found the balance point on this car with, when it's totally stripped like this is right about where I have the floor jack right now. Uh, with this floor jack, I, I can that's the heavy part of the lift is when you initially lift it. Once you get it up to the height to the, to the top of the floor jack, it's real easy to push over uh, by myself. And it's a lot easier lowering down. You don't need the jack to lower it back down. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that before I raise the car up. I wanted to take a break from some of the metal work and rust repair that I've been doing. Uh, real quickly, I did go ahead and get some primer <coughs> on uh, some of the metal work I've been doing. Uh, I just got some epoxy primer on here to where all the bare metal spots were at. Uh, I mocked up the front suspension. Um, uh, the front uprights, you know, I've got these rebuilt. The 
front uh, shocks I had rebuilt, uh, Apple Hydraulics. Uh, just got those back recently. Uh, what uh, I still have to do is uh, I've got the steering rack cleaned off, but it's not been painted. and I've got new boots and everything for it, but I just wanted to get kind of mock up things here in the front. The main reason is I wanted to check the wheelbase. <clears throat> and in checking the wheelbase, I need to uh, center on the front spindle to the center of the rear axle. So I'll show you what I've been doing back here. I've got the rear suspension kind of in uh, an area of where it should be. Um, so I can get some light in here. Um, I from I have it set in here, side to side. To, it's almost exactly where it needs to be and also front to back, the wheelbase. The uh, center line on the rear axle is uh, 91 inches. Uh, I have a, a mark up there on the wheel well. Uh, but what is not correct, it actually needs to go up approximately an inch and a half to two inches. Uh, I couldn't do that because you can see the uh, I'll get some light here. The BMW cross member mounts, which is, yeah, I'll get rid of, let me change some lighting here, which is this round, um, this is the round of rubber mount. I'm going to have to cut this off right in this, this area right here on both sides. That way I'll be able to raise it and I'll have to weld on some new brackets on here on on this so and make another bracket approximately where the mg spring mounts are where it can bolt together there uh, but again this whole thing needs to come up about inch and a half to two inches but it is fitting quite nicely um, i've been working on the rear suspension mounts i kind of have them uh, Tacked, everything tacked in place, uh, doing a bunch of measuring. It looks like this is just about where they belong. I made some brackets here. They're just tack welded on, but uh, this plate here is going to bolt to the cross member. Um, what I'm doing now is just setting it from side to side and front to back, but that's approximately where it's going to go. Um, I just have it clamped right now. I don't have it bolted together, but uh, everything seems to line up really nice. Uh, I've got some nice movement here. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. I've been doing some work on the rear cross member. Um, I got the brackets on the original spring mounts that come out and I made some new brackets on on the cross member that are welded on I uh, still have to do some cleaning up grinding work to do but it's all kind of there um, I also did some bracing here in the center uh, on the front and back and bottom uh, where it was just tack welded together before so that should be actually stronger than original and the same on this side, I uh, got these brackets on. I still have a lot of bit of welding to do. Because of the torque of this electric motor back here on these suspension arms, I, uh, I made these brackets here to support the center of the arms, the center pivot point, and the same on the outside. Um, I've got some steel plates that go on the other side of this panel here, but that will keep, there's gonna be a lot of force back and forward and back on this thing. So I didn't want anything to come loose or bend or break off later. Um, this is for future, there's gonna be a round tube going back here to help support uh, the motor and the framework. But I've, I've got this on uh, just temporarily to show where that goes. Um, 
And on the inside of the car, I'll show you that, the back of the transmission tunnel, uh, I added some bracing, some plates. Uh, there's also some plates that will go on those other two holes for the uh, outside pivot bracket. But that should help support the torque uh, of the motor and rear suspension arm. I have the uh, rear cross member brackets all built. Uh, I just have to do a little bit of grinding and some painting on them to clean them up, but uh, it's all in. It fits quite nicely. Uh, should be pretty strong. I've got uh, some added brackets here uh, in the center and on each side. So this should uh, handle the torque of the electric motor that we'll be putting in. Um, I did some work on the door. Uh, I cleaned off the surface rust that was on here. I sanded that, ground it all off. And then uh, I put some epoxy primer over the whole thing. This uh, door brace was, it's, there's a little bit of rust in it. Um, I didn't want to replace it. It was a little twisted, but I straightened it out and I put a uh, half inch square tube on the inside of it and uh, welded that on. So it's, it's a little bit heavier now, a lot, lot stronger. And again, the inside of the door, I fixed a little rust issue in the corner. Uh, and that was about it. The door was in really good shape. So I can start uh, fitting the door skin on the outside of this now. This is the new door skin for the left door. Uh, looks pretty nice. This one's uh, Steelcraft out of, out of uh, England, UK. Uh, got this through Moss Motors. Um, it's a nice, nice door. It has all the correct things on it. So I'm gonna see how this fits on there and I'll check back. Yeah, I just set the uh, inner door onto the outer skin, and man, it just it just fell right on. It's uh, it's a really a nice fit. I just put some uh, soft uh, spring clamps on around here, just kind of hold it in place. But yeah, it it fit really nice. I I didn't do any grinding or anything on anything. It just sat right in there. So that's good news. Um, this up here is where it's going to be tack welded on. Uh, that shouldn't take too much just to uh, probably drill a few holes here and put some uh, Clecos in there or, or a screw or something to hold it while I weld it But uh, this will be spot welded here and just a little bit of fitting on the corners uh, These this is where some of the spot welds were before that I drilled out on the old door skin um, Yeah, you just fold this over go around gently and tap it over with a with the body hammer looking good I spent about the last hour hour and a half I say an hour and a half going around and folding the edges over on here um, fold it over pretty nice uh, I don't have them totally tight in some areas like up here uh, and here in the corners. Originally this was brazed here. Uh, I'll have to do some little tack welds, but you can see it's not quite even there. Right there. A little bit of grinding, a little tack welds. Uh, that's, I'll probably weld, put a tack weld there. Uh, that was where it was originally. Um, this corner right here comes up kind of sharp, but I'll probably do a couple of little cuts on here and uh, this was originally welded here too, or brazed, I should say, from the factory. So that'll all straighten out though, really nice. Uh, I've got this folded over. Um, I still have some fitting, some welding to do here, uh, but I want to get the wing window, make sure the wing window fits in here nice uh, before I go too far with this. But this is the door. Oop, there we go. Some of the paint flaked off. It's all going to be sanded down, probably to bare metal and, and reprimed anyway.
but uh, you can see where this needs to be trimmed off a little bit right there and well that'll that'll fix up nice but yeah it just came out really nice it looks nice and straight um, you have to be really careful when you're putting when you're tapping this on you don't want to just start whacking on it you just got to tap it um, I did not do any hammering or tapping on on the skin the outside skin area of this door I did it all from the underside uh, from the back side because um, you just you don't want to deform any of this um, in fact I was using I was using my old uh, plastic hammer with a with a rag over it on 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 this side, uh, I did a little bit of the with with the hard dolly uh, with the cloth over it, but I didn't want to mar this up at all. Um, this came out really nice. I'm real happy with that. Um, I think I'll do some welding on this after I get it fitted a little more on the car. Uh, Anyway, it's good for now. Um, the body kit has arrived. Uh, all four fenders, the rear wheel wells, the front spoiler, uh, rear piece, and some bracing for the inner fenders. Um, two doors are not part of the kit, that's what I had. I just set them out here while I'm moving things around in the garage because here is a Tesla small rear drive motor assembly. Um, pretty cool. It's about, I think, 195 pounds for the power unit. And over here, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Tesla axles. Uh, the power charging unit, that's the big one, 6.6 .6 kilowatt. And a power converter from the high voltage down to 12 volts. Uh, the T2C Tesla motor drive controller. Uh, BMS, a bunch of little parts. Uh, Tesla throttle pedal, some relays, the charging port. And this is what the batteries look like. There's 25 of them in this box. There are uh, five across, four deep. So there's, or excuse me, there's five down, five across. So there's 25 in there. And that makes 26. Uh, these weigh about, I think they weigh 18 pounds a piece. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. They're under 20 pounds, or I think they're 18 a piece. Um, but that's what I got yesterday. So I had a busy day unpacking all of this. And uh, I'll show you some more later.